<laughs> and um, welcome to everybody. I think we're going to have a grand time today and have a stimulating and lots of interesting ideas to play with as we continue in our journey to um, transform ourselves in the world. So we'll see how, how this conversation goes, but welcome and great to see everybody. I'm gonna put in the chat room um, a, uh, a, a, um, a link to uh, our recordings in case you um, are interested in using this recording at some point in the future. I'm gonna introduce also our next um, call is gonna be on, uh, we always do the third, um, uh, the third Tuesday in the month. So our next call is going to be January 17th. And um, on the 17th on January, a woman by the name of Amanda Lamont from Australia is going to come and share some of her thinking. Now she's been, her background experience is uh, helping communities recover from climate disasters in Australia, floods, fires, et cetera, et cetera. And she's currently um, thinking about these days about uh, how do we think about restoration and uh, recovery from uh, the framework of an ecosystem framework and one that doesn't put people in the center of the recovery model, but actually puts the whole ecology together in that. So she's gonna be coming and sharing her experience and insight um, and it'll be a lot of fun. So that's uh, January 17th. And then I wanna, um, introduce Marianne, who's kind of been the wonderful coordinator of this session. Marianne and I have known each other for over four decades, which is mm -hmm. kind of stunning to think about. Um, but it's, uh, I have known of her love and joy that uh, she's gotten from horses and uh, for most, most of her life. And as uh, we were looking at topics going forward, <laughs> excuse me, um, I just thought that there was something powerful in her experience that she's had with these folks from uh, um, Acres for Change Arches. Um, and, uh, and so I thought that she would be, um, uh, I asked her if she would consider coming in and sharing some of her wisdom and insight. And she, she's connected us with other great people. So I'm gonna let Marianne take the invite from here. Thank you, Kathy. And um, just to foreshadow, my computer booted me out of everything about a minute and a half ago. So I don't understand what happened, but <laughs> let's hope it doesn't do it again. Or maybe it's supposed to happen that way. Who knows? Um, hello, everyone. And I see some familiar faces from the regenerative um, call and also some new faces as well connected to the horses horses interest. So um, uh, yes, as she said, I want to just thank Kathy for inviting me to share a little bit. She's heard enough about this blah, 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 over 40 years about me and my love of horses. But along the way, also, we've shared a common um, passion for leadership learning, leadership development work. So um, and uh, so with that in mind, I'm just happy, you know, to talk about a couple of minutes, power of horses, leadership learning and transformation, because when you're in leadership training and education, that is what I do it for, hopefully helping people move from here to there, wherever here is and wherever there is, um, helping them to move forward. Um, and as she's, she is correct, I, my dad said he can't remember that when he didn't remember that I was all about horses, 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 you know, and <laughs> making the family take me to a ranch in South Dakota when I was five, riding horses. Um, but uh, and then, but then moved it along, had a pony, and then never got a you know, to have a big horse big, as a big person, but um, kept up with it. The daughter picked up the passion, so I've always been interested in it. Then along the way, building a career in leadership development work, and most recently, until I retired last January, um, a career in University of Minnesota Extension, um, working with leadership and civic engagement education. And so all along the way, I came upon and learned about fortuitously about equine assisted learning, which just made my mind blow up because I thought, is there, <laughs> is there a way that this overlaps? And I ended up having a personal story of that drove that message home. 
through and far with far reaching transformation as well for me. And so I offered to, to talk about this briefly, the story. Um, so while I was an extension, I was promoted, um, applied for and promoted to being the boss of the team of leadership and civic engagement educators that I was on. And now I was leading leadership educators <laughs> on a statewide team. And uh, needless to say, was uh, nervous about it. Um, yet, of course, I can do this, right? Well, um, concurrently, a couple of pioneering women in the field, one of Lynn Baskfield, some people know on this call might know her. Mm -hmm. um, I happened to meet them by spotting a poster on a billboard or a bulletin board and went to a workshop, Leadership for Women. And there was five of us women in this workshop in a barn in Somerset, Wisconsin. And this equine assisted experience was this. Basically, you think you start out the workshop, you're thinking about your intentions, what's the thing you're working on. Well, my situation to get through or my challenge in front of me was becoming now the boss of peers. And like, I, as I described the head. And she said, okay, with that in mind, look at those five horses out in the arena. And there's, in this methodology, she uses halters. Pick up a halter that's on the ground and go, put it on a horse. Well, I had a pony. I had a daughter who, you know, I knew how to do this, you know, or as a labor upon reflection, I'm a leader. I can lead leaders. Right. And so, well, the last halter on the ground was the biggest halter that belonged to the biggest horse in the arena named Cole, huge horse. The other ones were almost ponies. This one was huge. And he was putting up a fuss. He knew something was up. Now I can reflect this. He's storming, stomping around the arena. He's sweating. He's barreling around it. And I'm supposed to go put a halter on this horse? Well, we get into the arena. And Lynn and her colleague, Ann, um, were walking with me with safety in mind. And I said, OK. So I start going out to the arena. Well, Cole wanted nothing to do with that. And he stormed away. And every time I'd stay, take, you know, steps, he'd storm away. And then Ann started coaching me. She said, look what you're doing. You're taking a step. He's, but now you're stopping and he's stopping, you know? And so we kind of did this round and I was nervous as heck. And then all of a sudden I looked at him. We're about 25 feet apart and he's breathing hard. And I say, Cole will be fine. And I believed it from my head, but I believed it through my feet. There was something that just stopped me. And I said, we'll be fine. I walked right up to him and put the halter on him. We started walking around the arena and I started getting that feeling like, you know, I got to control. I, I, uh, and then he started acting up and I stopped and I said, Cole will be fine. I had to go to that feeling. And then we walked around the arena with no other kind of fuss and muss. Mm -hmm. And it, Again, it almost makes me tear up when I think about it. Well, two weeks later, at one of my big first staff meetings, an old issue that needed to be resolved blew up again. It blew up. And everybody was just, ah, because they had this problem had been simmering for years. And I stopped in the middle of it. I went to that spot and I said, in my brain, in my heart, in my feet, and I said, you guys will be fine. We'll be fine. Let's just go there and let's just figure out what, let's unpack what's going on right now. And it just took the took all the angst out the room, left the room and went forward. So I, I tell you, there were numerous times where I have since in my life gone to that. So the, I just want to, you know, so the impacts really of it were kind of that lessening of fear, the increasing the calm, giving me a new strategy, almost an almost a new technique for use in my leadership. Um, and then reminded me how much I was love this whole idea and this whole concept and the power of experience. So especially for those of us who live to live in our heads and we think we know and we know, well, it doesn't change much until you feel it, in my opinion, is what happened. Um, fast forward to retirement and I'm looking around online. I'm like, who's doing this work? And I spot Acres for Life. And on there, I see a old a friend who had retired from extension years before featured on their website. I'm like, there can't be that many Larry Coils, this is his last name, in the world. I call him, he goes, oh yeah, I've been volunteering. He's a vet. 
And he left extension in his retirement. He was volunteering there. So we had a great conversation. He said, you need to reach out to these people. They would love you connecting with them. So I made a call and that was about a year or so ago. And I met Lynn Moore and Heather Jeffrey. And in the process of the volunteering I've done at this wonderful place mm -hmm. and space called Acres for Life, um, I have gotten to know them. And I've gotten to learn now a new about a new and exciting framework or new to me, but um, grounded in lifelong pieces of work that has been co-created by Lynn and Lynn Thomas, who you see on this call. And I see Amanda's there. There's a co-facilitator team that have come up with in this amazing um, framing. And um, I've gotten to learn now some of the backstage um, concepts to help bring this sort of learning and experience to life. So I'm, I guess with that in mind, I just want to say it, it's been life-changing and it continues to be and completely unexpected. If you would have told me I'd be sitting here a year plus later talking about the story of coal, which happened about 15 years ago, mm -hmm. um, it, I would be surprised. So I mm -hmm. think with that in mind today, I'm going to now hand the microphone over to Lynn Moore. There's two Lynn, so you get Lynn Moore <laughs> and Heather Jeffrey uh, from Acres for Life. So Lynn and Heather, take it away. All right. Well, thank you, um, Marianne. That was a beautiful story. I love hearing that story and all those connections. Um, Heather and I are going to share just a little bit about Acres for Life. And I am going to attempt to pull up a couple slides only because it will help us stay on track instead of we could we, we love this and could talk about this forever so does everybody see the slide yep yep okay got it um well thank you everybody for for being here today we appreciate it so much um i am the uh, uh founder of Acres for Life, co-founder and um, CEO. That is my role here at Acres, um, among other things, chief bottle washer, scoop, uh, you know, stall, cleaner, all those type things too. Um, but Acres for Life started from a story as well, my own life. I went through a very difficult time, uh, one of the darkest time um, in my life, my professional career was going wonderfully, um, my personal life, not so much. And I was kind of a shell of a person. And back to 25 years ago, um, four horses helped me find my way back. I knew nothing about equine therapy, equine learning, um, but I knew about the power of nature and the power of animals. Um, in fact, I have a golden right, a golden retriever right by me that is trying to get into the presentation. So he might join in my lap in just a minute. Um, anyway, uh, those horses back 25 years ago helped me transform my life and change my story to where we are today. So Acres is in Minnesota. We're a nonprofit, um, and we found. Can you hear me? Okay. Yep. Yep. Okay. Founded in um, 2001. Currently, we have 17 horses that we are privileged to stand with and alongside, and um, and be part of how this transformation transformational work happens. 16 professional facilitators and 15 regular uh, volunteers help us to show up each and every day. This year, uh, well, when we started our first year, we did four sessions that entire year. And this year we're finishing the year with over 2,200 sessions. And a session can be a 50 minute um, session with the horses um, or and, and out in nature with the chickens, the, the dogs, the cats, um, utilizing the arch framework, which we're going to talk about um, in just a few minutes. Um, or it can be a, a session, could be a retreat, uh, could be a team building experience. So but we're, we're going over to um, 2200 of those this year. So it's been a very busy year for us. Um, we incorporate, as uh, I mentioned, uh, well, our mission there talks about stewarding the legacy of hope with passion, people, and purpose. And that actually came um, organically out of a, a equine session 
that Lynn Thomas helped facilitate and Amanda Graham was here and we were doing a training at Acres for Life and our team volunteered to be um, the team to go through the process. And our um, mission was built um, right there and it, it's just perfect for us. Um, this is a place where people find hope, healing and transformation, personal and professional. Um, and as I mentioned, we incorporate, I've been working with um, Lynn Thomas for uh, about 20 years in another model. Um, we worked with Amanda and other co-facilitator or co-creators to create Arenas for Change about a year and a half, two years ago. And Arenas for Change, we call it, uh, nickname is Arch. So Arenas, A-R and Change, C-H. So the Arch framework, where we come along uh, side folks to help facilitate change through story. Uh, we, believe, we believe that stories matter, um, that uh, stories are powerful. I know this group believes that too. It's a way of connecting, communicating, and facilitating change. Um, I think I'll pause and I'll hand it over to Heather if you want to share just a little bit more about how we incorporate uh, the horses into and nature into the story and into the change process. Yeah, I'd be happy to. Hi, everyone. I'm Heather Jeffrey. I'm a chief operations officer at Acres, and I've been with Acres for 17 years now. So I'm really grateful, grateful to be alongside Lynn and the rest of our team. Um, just hearing even your guys's intros and then hearing Marianne's story, I have a feeling that I know I could talk about this forever. Um, so I'm going to try to keep it really short, but the power of nature and horses and facilitating change is absolutely incredible. Um, everything in our space becomes a character in our story. Um, the horses all become characters. Nature becomes characters. Just this past week, we're out in a session with the horses in a fenced environment and they're talking about boundaries and what boundaries do. And just as we're talking about it, these deer come leaping into the pasture. There were three different ones. One went over, one went through, and one went under the fence. And then they're all, you know, running through and then off they go. And it was just this speechless moment where you were just amazed, like not only by the splendor of nature in that moment, but you were just so moved about, wow, who or what are these characters that the boundaries as we'd been talking about are affected differently than the horses or ourselves. Um, and so then that created a whole conversation around boundaries and gates and all of those things. Earlier this week also, and I know Mark, who's also from Minneapolis can appreciate this, it was cold and it was snowing and it was blowing. And we had clients outside with us because we're always outside the power of nature. And they said, can I go into the shed? And so we stepped into this three-sided shed where there was relief from the snow and the ice and the wind. And that became their conversation around the shelter and their values and those things that keep them safe in the storms of life. And so it's just this opportunity to explore who and what those characters are. Um, the horses themselves, um, this was just this past weekend on Saturday, we had a client who's really struggling in his home and we have three different areas in this pasture and all the horses came up into this small area years back towards one another. And he's like, well, there's me and my partner as he's watching the horses interact with one another. And I'm like, wow, what brings them all up here? And he's processing through what it feels like to be in this small area with that idea of ears back. And he's like, they're all, you know, she's all up in my grill is what he kept saying up in my grill. And with that realization, as he's watching them all swirl in this small area, he's like, but there's gates open. Doesn't anyone realize they can get unstuck? I'm like, oh, so we explored unstuck. And that literally, I could not have scripted it better, but it was at that moment that one of the horses saw the open gate led the way and they all went running out into this huge pasture. He's like, my God, it's the pasture of opportunity. And so you can't, you can't even explain why the horses do what they do, but just like Marianne was saying, you feel it. You don't cognitively think it, you feel it and it shifts everything. It changes everything because of how the horses are and what the nature and the weather and all of that provides. I could talk forever, but I'm gonna to toss it back <laughs> to Lynn and she can pick up from there. Thank you, you guys. Thank you so much. You can tell how much we love this and we are just honored to be um, 
joining with folks in their stories. I'm going to hand it over to Lynn Thomas right. to share a little yeah. bit more. It's been fun to be part of mm -hmm. uh, Lynn's story and yeah. Yeah. Um, create Arenas for Change. So Lynn, do you want to take it away? Yeah, thank you. Hi, everyone. Nice to meet you. And thank you for joining us on this. Um, yeah, so Arenas for Change, ARCH for short, as you guys have heard, is a, a community of professionals, a learning community of professionals for mental health, education, and coaching realms, and in particular, uh, incorporating environments of nature, animals, and horses. And our focus is really how do we increase psychological safety and really deepen and accelerate the work we do. And so we, we work and learn from one another in that. And we discovered in that journey of learning that working through a mindset of story is really um, a really beneficial way and seems to impact our clients in a way that feels psychologically safe and um, takes us on paths we don't necessarily, um, I, I guess as a facilitator, looking for those ways to really help people transform. And that these guys were talking about the power of horses. Well, um, one thing we've discovered about horses is they are amazing story editors in that journey. And so um, they help us shift stories in ways we don't anticipate and engage us and surprise us. And it's kind of fun to see where, where what learning they'll take us on. And so, um, so uh, yeah, so Arch is a membership subscription-based kind of membership platform through online and in-person learning. And we do community calls like this, which has been really wonderful learning from each other. So yeah, basically this is our focus, stories plus horses plus nature. Um, right, and animals in general is what helps us truly transform, can assist in that transformation. And one of the benefits of stories is we can experience our life experiences through different perspectives. We can experience it as a character, which is how we live life generally, like we're feeling we're in it, we're in the middle of it. Um, we can also then take a step back and look at it as a viewer. We can look at it as a director and we can look at it as an author. So we support clients in that journey. And so we thought, rather than continuing to just share and talk about it, um, that we'd actually take you guys through an experience um, of co-creating a story or building a story together, um, together in the sense we're going to do it together, but that you're going to do your own individual stories. And so we don't have real horses here, but we are going to utilize pictures of horses, which also is wonderful to do too. Um, we are, and my and so, um, thing just cracked. <laughs> so let me just open it up really quickly. Oh. Yeah, no worries, because I'll still kind of. Um, so if you guys have either a piece of paper, you might want to jot some of your thoughts down as we're going through this this experiential process together, or if you like to type on your computer, just know some of these things might be as we go through this something you might want to take some notes down. Um, but yeah, what we're gonna do? I mean, stories are about journeys of transformation. And, and we love that we came up with the name Arch as our name because arches are symbolic of new beginnings, new perspectives and transformation. And we look at a story as we start on one side of the arch and that's kind of that beginning stage of um, where is the story gonna take me? Do I even wanna move forward? Do I even wanna go through a journey of transformation? Uh, then you have the middle of the arch, which is the very messy, it goes up and down all around plot twists, uh, you know, a time of, of the story. And then on the other side of the arch is that moment of transformation, which we call the, the arch moment in arch. So um, we're going to take ourselves on, a, on a, a, a journey here of a story. And sometimes stories start off with asking ourselves a question. Perhaps we have a question in mind of something that's kind of going on in our lives whether it be around leadership, whether it be around anything else personally or professionally. Sometimes our clients create stories that are make-believe. So it doesn't even have to be a real story. And sometimes, um, you know, stories about other people. So just know that it's really open and broad. And the idea is that this story is gonna take us in directions that maybe brings new insights and, and new awarenesses we hadn't thought of. So if you're thinking about a question in mind, um, the other thing is we're thinking about stories is stories tend to have general premises. If you think about stories, movies, whatever, they kind of have general themes. And we've come up with four primary categories of what those themes are. And that is stories are about a character, characters going through transformation that are either about a situation 
to get through, a challenge to overcome, a relationship struggle. And this can be a relationship with others, relationship with ourself, relationship with beliefs, with our environment. Um, so relationship struggle of some sort or a limiting belief or beliefs. So a situation to get through, a challenge to overcome, a uh, relationship struggle or a limiting belief. So I'm mentioning those to see if, whether you have a question or don't have a question. And if any of those four things suddenly like, kind of like, hmm, that sounds like it would be an interesting story to unfold today. You can kind of pick one of those areas of focus, okay? So, um, all right. So I think when we're ready to go ahead and bring up the horse pictures. Okay, here we go. Can you see the screen? There should be yep, three rows of four pictures. And we're going to start off with inviting each of you, you know, individually to pick a picture that is yet you're feeling drawn towards that may connect to what those, what your question might be or what those four areas might be. And it looks like someone asked to put it in the chat. So we'll, we'll pause as you're looking to put a picture in there and we can put those in the chat. And also in the chat, if you want to say, hey, I can't see the picture very well, could you, um, oh, it looks like Kathy's doing that. Thank you, Kathy or, and Marianne. Thanks guys, put those in the chat. Um, if you wanna put in the chat, like, hey, can you zoom in on picture number two or something like that? We can do that quickly as well. But the first step is just picking a picture that you're feeling drawn to that might start reflecting the beginning of this story. <clears throat> and as you're picking that picture, start thinking about what is it about this picture that is telling a story for you? And it looks like someone wants number three to be, oh, and number eight brought up, Lynn. Okay. There's number three. And Lynn, can you say again, Lynn T, what, what is the question that you're asking? Right now, the question is what picture you're drawn to. And then as you're looking at that picture, what is it about this picture that's starting to tell a story? Okay, thank you. Okay, and I think we can go to the full, there we go, yeah. Um, so we're gonna invite you guys now to start identifying various characters you're seeing in your picture. picture. The characters might be like, there's might be two horses. There could be other characters like the tractor, hay, a fence, the sky. So just kind of start thinking about what might be playing a role in this story and we're looking at them as characters. So start identifying the characters in your story. And with that, what do those characters look like? So identify the characters and start identifying some of the physical characteristics of those characters. And as you're starting to identify those physical characteristics, go ahead and start asking yourself, what are those characters feeling? 
And what are those characters saying? What are they feeling and what are they saying in this story? Lynn Moore, um, someone would like picture two to be close up for a minute, if you could. You bet. Then, then T, could you just say again, too, again, the question people are work, working on now? What do the characters look like? What are they feeling? And what are they saying? And maybe I, I would be wondering if, if one person would just be willing to just verbalize out loud. We could ask someone to verbalize what their characters are that they're feeling, saying, or noticing so far in their picture. Here. I'll go if you want that. Okay, thank you, Lowell. Great. All right, well, well, I'm on uh, picture number eight, and uh, let's see. Uh, oh, my, first, my, my first horse ever was a leopard Appaloosa. Uh, so that, that's the initial drawer. Uh, his name was Sundance. Uh, I'm looking at this guy. He's an old timer uh, who's been there and done that. Uh, yet he still likes to hang out with kids and be social and uh, uh, be around people and meet their needs. So that, this is uh, what I'm seeing. You can see by his expression, he's uh, old and tired, but you know he just had his rainbow or mane done uh, probably by a little kid and uh, it just welcomes the attention. Did Thank I you. Cover all that, the surroundings, uh, not too much. Uh, uh, other than the expression in his eye that he, and his face that uh, he enjoys the comfort and attention. Mm. All right, thank, thank, you. thank you for sharing that example, Lowell. Yeah, thank um, you. So yeah, we're gonna continue on. And, and as you guys could hear, even the beginning of Lowell's story, we're starting to learn probably maybe, and again, it doesn't have to be about Lowell, but we're starting to hear a perspective, a story perspective of Lowell. And, mm -hmm. um, and we could go in and, and delve and do more character development, but we're going to move on just to get more experience of some other things we might do to explore our story. So Lynn's gonna go into the next bit. Sure. So continuing with your story, another way or a component of developing it and gaining insight is around, is looking at timeline. So thinking about your story and the character, characters that you've identified, what timeline are they in past present or future so thinking about what they're what they're as you're looking at it right now are they in past present future take a few minutes to think about that and what might they be experiencing in that time frame And then if you were in the past, present, future, whichever one you were in, pick another one to look at what might emerge about the story, thinking about the character in a different time frame. So if you were in past, maybe you're in present now or future. Thank you. 
kind of. <laughs> and and maybe what is it about in that picture that meeting? Is, so it just doesn't do the time. Frame. The arch meeting. I have too much shit going on. Lynn Moore, can you say that one more time? What is it to, as you're looking at this picture, what is it that uh, maybe speaking to that time yes, frame? Yes. What is it about yeah, this picture yeah. that's speaking to that new time frame? Okay. Yeah, new one or the other one. Just what okay. elements, what characteristics yeah, might be making that time that frame up? Okay. Well, then I'm not supposed to get that. And then thinking about the third time frame that you haven't visited in this picture, how might that show be showing up? So the characters and the story itself has a past and a present and a future. And we can look at those and what messages those are providing. And then also we're gonna look at locations. If you think about how much time is spent on stories in on the locations and the set, the settings, cause locations matter. And so we're gonna invite you guys to start looking at your picture and what some of the characteristics of the location that the story is taking place in. You know, what does the location look like? Kind of go through your five senses. What does it look like? What color is it? What size is it? What shape, texture, smells, sounds, all the different elements and kind of characteristics of the location. Go ahead and start identifying some of those things of your story. You can zoom in and out and get those kind of perspectives about the location too. And as you're defining some of those different elements of the location and those characteristics, uh, go ahead and start thinking about what messages 
might each of the elements of the location be sending? Because that's all part of a story. And every part is sending a message. And so what might the location itself be sending? What messages? And now thinking about your character or the location that they're in, look at finding what would represent or characterize or be the opposite. The opposite might be something in the same picture that you were drawn to that the story has been emerging and building. The opposite might be in another picture. Feel free to let your mind, body and spirit look and be drawn to what is the opposite. <laughs> and many times within the opposite is the transformation we're just asking what is what is the other side of the arch what is one side what is the other and what might be emerging or working on or achieving a transformation within this story. Okay, Lynn, I was making notes about my own story. So can you restate the question? <laughs> I can't type it. I was just thinking about, you know, the opposite and many yeah. times, the transformation many times is within the opposite. And we started on one side, the character of the story started on one side of an arch. As the story emerged, it may have with the opposite, may a transformation may have happened, maybe happening. <laughs> so what is, you know, what is that other side of the arch looking like in this story? So we're gonna wrap up this experience with one more question. And we're gonna invite you guys to think of a working title for the story so far. And we call it working because this is not the final title. It could be whatever pops first into your head. If you were to title the story that has emerged today, go ahead and just jot down what that title is. And if anyone wants to share their titles, you're welcome to do that in the chat.
And I know we we like powered through this. There's there's a lot more we can do with this, but this is just to give a beginning feel and idea of what an experience like this can feel like. Um, and just with our limited time, but hopefully that gave that sense of what could be what could emerge by just going through a process like this. And if you can imagine being in a space with nature, with with horses that are moving and changing your story in unexpected ways. Um, that just adds that extra dynamic and benefit to the, the learning journey. We call and those plot twists. <laughs> <laughs> plot twists that the horses give. But I think um, now is where we'll turn it back over to, I guess, Marianne and Kathy for I guess, sure. sharing any thoughts from the group. I'll just uh, say a really quick thought, it, you know, one of my, I think Heather, if you could see me on, cause we can't see everybody all the time, my grinning, because I just had this <laughs> arch moment. Um, the something that related to my family experience on Sunday here, it came out in here and I completely did not expect that plot twist, but it gave me great humor and joy <laughs> to see it happen <laughs> real time. So thank you. I um, want to add that I was using this um, in an organizational leadership graduate program in from about 2011 to about 2014. We were reading Parker Palmer's A Hidden Wholeness, and we were using it for individuals as well as work environments, group situations. And the impact on students individually as they encountered their fear, um, overcame it, in some cases didn't, um, the value of being in a totally different environment with their class members, um, it, was, it was pretty remarkable, pretty extraordinary to the point where the program determined that every class going forward was going to experience working with the horses. Um, it was a revelation, an epiphanal moment um, for those students working individually as well as together to realize that in most cases, the nonverbal communication to use the vernacular, the energy, the vibrations that were being shared among the animal and the people was profound for most of them. The director of the program participated and that did it. Um, we had been doing it already for about a year. And when the director came and observed what was happening said, this is, this is it, we have to include this. It's so invaluable with something such as a hidden wholeness to better understand the impact on leaders and um, groups they're involved with is absolutely stunning. So I'm just throwing throwing that one out there too. It was it's cool stuff. So we were thinking at this time, we would invite people to share their connections, observations, oh. <laughs> questions, uh, experiences. <laughs> Thank you, Mary. Uh, uh, and, uh, and just kind of see where the rest of the conversation goes. We got about 10 minutes left before we end our conversation today. Well, I just wanna... <clears throat> Thank you for leading us through this experience. It was really helpful to actually be led through it and see how it works. And I got a lot of ahas for myself choosing the number three horse, which was the powering forward. And I'm in a season where our, our uh, nonprofit therapy farm is getting ready to, to kick up to another level. We have some new leadership in our board, which has been awesome and very comforting and feeling safe to me. So the um, the number three horse was the deep snow and 
um, some of the, the safety and limitations of being in a fenced paddock and the sense of confidence that horse has. I feel that in a lot of ways, but also that horse is alone. And in the last few years, I've felt alone at different times because we just didn't have, um, there was some isolation and some in, indecision of direction. And then I chose the, the number five picture as the opposite. And that was a, a summer day, a lush green field and a herd of horses. And I feel like that's what we're moving toward is doing this together and um, in, a, in a lush, rich, full of promise and possibility way. And the arch model is what we're considering right now. I definitely wanna move forward with that. And so this opportunity to experience the model, even just sitting here doing the pictures, I could see how that could be really helpful if you don't necessarily have horses, which we do have a couple of horses and we'll get a few more, but um, just still was very powerful just to be looking at the pictures and have those questions guiding you. Um, it was very, very rich. So thank you for that. I've been Thank you for sharing. Again. Go ahead. Who's next? Who is saying somebody was? I think Lynn, are you able to share a link to the pictures? Are you saying okay? No, I was thinking to the yes. Twitch's website. Also, uh, both websites, Kathy. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. <laughs> Two. <laughs> Cool. I liked how you originally said um, acres for change. And I was like, oh, that's if acres for life and arenas for change got yeah, married. It was just so. a little bit of um, <laughs> brain fart there. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, we it's okay. I love that. So I think yeah. one thing that's interesting to um, Julie, as you were sharing that this, even the, the pictures, um, you know, not even live horses, right? and we can have this emotional deep connection. And that's what we're finding too, is I've been doing this 20, 22 years now with horses and nature. And there is something about this next level of going incorporating story, the arenas for change framework and the way we go through it and the way we ask the questions and the way we come alongside as story editors with, um, we're not authors. Mm -hmm. um, of our client's story, right? Uh, however, we come alongside and we are, we're in different roles. We're viewers and listeners um, where they feel really seen and heard in this process, whether it's with real horses um, or it's with the, the horses on the screen or, or nature pictures or whatever that is. It can be dogs and chickens as well. Um, but we come alongside viewers and, and, and witnesses or, or listeners, and then we can be um, story editors. Um, and we can help them, you know, think about maybe areas to develop the story a little bit more. Um, mm -hmm. So it's a, the arenas for change framework really is helping us take this to um, another level and much faster, it appears, for this transformational insight to happen. I saw a little, yeah, go yeah, ahead. Right. It looked like you wanted to say something earlier. Yeah, I want to know next steps. Uh, again, uh, I'm not a counselor. Uh, my background is uh, 50 years of being a healthcare administrator, uh, retired and consulting now, but I've had the ranch for 20 years. Uh, I've done a lot of some therapeutic work when I was in skilled nursing and writing therapy and then more equine assisted, but uh, I, I do have a number of social workers and KSAC workers uh, interested in getting involved in a program. I've looked at EGALA, which is a, a much more technically involved and longer training. So what do I got to do to get my, my people who are interested uh, in starting at, uh, at my facility? Uh, how do we proceed? Lynn, do you want to speak to that? Uh, sure. Yeah. Thanks, Lowell. I mean, we, and um yeah, we actually uh, created a membership subscription platform, so it'd be really easy access. So a place to start is for people can just get on the site and start taking the online courses. There's videos of actual sessions to watch. And like uh, Lynn mentioned, that this can be applied in a lot of different environments as well. So we've had people's, you know, 
uh, clinicians, coaches, and so forth, and educators mentioned that it's helped them in all their environments, including telehealth, mm -hmm. virtual sessions, office work. So, but yeah, you can go to arenasforchange.com. It's $35 a month, or there's an organizational membership as well that you could have all your team members have access. So you can uh, look on our site and get that information. So yeah, thanks for that. Okay, thank you. There's, a, there's an online training, a two-day workshop that's coming up too in February. Um, if you want to get a little deeper in it. Um, and then there's also, you can come uh, do a professional residence here where we immerse you in the process. Here in Minnesota, you might want to do it in the summer. I'm just saying, probably right now it's a little cold, but you're probably used to that in, in New York there, so. You know, I, I've been uh, in my coaching calls, I often get um, uh, similar kind of questions that people are thinking about. Um, and the ones that most recently came up uh, were phrases that leaders, I'm a coach, uh, kind of like you, Lowell, um, who are uh, trying to build phrases in, into their head to remind them to look broader or deeper into what's going on. So one person was using the metaphor and question what's off camera, you know, to help him develop more peripheral vision and not get stuck on what's obvious and in front. And uh, the other was um, a phrase of beware of the one story narrative. And so it was a way of keep seeking additional stories, not just in our own lives, but um, in uh, the lives of how we describe what's going on in our organizations. And, um, or what's going on in our society. And I think that this power of story is really amazing. And I just love that phrase that comes out of the Archer's framework of, you know, change your story, change your life. And uh, currently I'm working on a project to help people move from passion to action. And uh, um, what's interesting is that the overstory that creates a limiting belief on how we can help transform our world is that what difference does one person's change or actions make? Um, and so they may be um, in a position where they just don't think they should act or could act. Uh, and then when you change the story to see it through the lens of interdependence, for example, you begin to realize, oh, any action has the chance to ripple through. And so it's a beautiful, this framework of limiting beliefs and how we can reauthor our thinking mm -hmm. and our lives by changing or going through some experience like this that helps us change the way we think. And then we change the way we act. And it's pretty amazing. And I, oh, go ahead, Marion. I just wanted to say too, um, the thing I wanted to just link also as well, and I know um, is to the concept of sustainability, which, you know, is, is really a mantra around the regenerative leadership group that, you know, under Kathy's work and is that the change is sustainable kind of within this, you know, it's a sustainability uh, definition different maybe than the typical, but it's, it's deep and it's, it's sustainability um, in a different way of using this approach. So I just wanted to add that as well. The other thing I like about the framework of story is that um, story is an is, stories are always in evolution, and oftentimes organizationally we 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 are focused on change, you know, which is a kind of a more immediate framework, not necessarily a direction, but just a change from where we are currently. So if you think about the story as evolving, it matches up with what nature would teach us, which is. Uh, nature is focused on evolution. Change happens all the time in nature. So change isn't the yeah, focus. It's the evolution of our thinking or our being or our practice that actually shapes us. And the stories is a beautiful kind of framework to help us do that. And then to have horses or have some authentic connection to something or someone that gives us really clear feedback about when we're being authentic or inauthentic or lying to ourselves or whatever just helps, as you said, horses are great editors. You know, who are, who are your great editors in your life, I think is 
one of the beautiful questions from here. Well, speaking as a webinar editor, I'm gonna say that we're at, we're at time. So. <laughs> we are at time. And uh, any, everybody's, these are open calls. So anybody can come back, we'll, we'll join, we'll hang out again on oh, wow. January 17th uh, with Amanda and uh, she will tell her stories of, of uh, how we, re how, what is, what, what has she learned from helping communities and ecologies recover and, and what are some of the new provocative thinking that is arising from her work in Australia? So all, all seriously fun. So thank you. And if you haven't already put your website in to the chat room, you might wanna do that so people can connect to each other. And um, thank you so much for hanging out with us today. Seriously fun. Lynn, Lynn, Everyone. Mary Ann, and Heather, thank you so much. Thank you guys. Time. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. All right. Stay warm and take care. Happy holidays. Yes, same to all of you. Mm -hmm. I'm not there in January. It's because I'm on the beach in Hawaii. Oh, well. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you poor thing. Yeah. Um, might not I got to get out of New York snow. So it's yeah. okay. <laughs> that sounds like a good place to be on the beach. Oh, sure it does. Kathy, folks, stop the recording. Um...